In this video, we'll examine base motion and how to incorporate its effects into our structural model. And the idea is there's, there's certain circumstances, like the event of a car going down a bumpy road, where the base is excited or a motion for the base is prescribed as opposed to a force being applied to the mass. And we'd like to understand how to treat this. So in this example, we see a car or a motorcycle or some sort of a vehicle traveling down a bumpy road. Um, the displacement of the wheel due to the road could be imagined as some sort of a harmonic motion where we could describe it as y equals y0 e to the i omega t, where y0 is the amplitude of the wave. And if we translate that into a model that we're used to, it might look something like what I've drawn on the right here where in this case we've got a mass spring damper system um, just because of the nature of the problem x is now upward and the idea is and we haven't seen this in previous videos but what if the base is now being shaken around what is the effect of the mass due to that another example which is close to my heart uh, because i live in los angeles and of course here we get earthquakes is the case of a building where you might have a two-story building in this example and the ground starts to shake and typically earthquakes uh, exhibit some sort of harmonic motion so if we assume that that can be described as y sub zero e to the i omega t then we can imagine that as the ground shakes it causes both both mass one and mass two your two different floors of your building to shake and in general these floors are attached to one another with supports that show some sort of elasticity so we can assume that it's stiffness k and uh, I've just drawn this as k over 2 each of them so that additively they, they add up to k and that might be replaced by a model that we see on the right where we've got a mass uh, a base with two masses and two springs connecting them and the base is being oscillated according to some displacement some prescribed displacement y equals y sub 0 e to the i omega t so in this video, what we're going to do is take a look at the first problem, the idea of a vehicle moving down a bumpy road. And we're going to see how do we incorporate this into our model? How do we adjust our model to incorporate these effects and then solve it using the techniques we already know? So in this case, we've got a base that's moving uh, with a prescribed displacement of y sub zero e to the i omega t, some harmonic motion of the base. And other than that, it's a typical mass spring system, and the only difference is we've drawn it pointing upwards. X is upwards in this case. And we know that the equation, well, the first thing we'd need to do is draw a free body diagram. Free body diagram, where we separate the mass from the supports, and we replace each of them, each of the supports that we've cut with a force. So we've got one force here and we've got another force here and the first force is due to the spring and it is equal to k times normally it would just be kx but in this case it's kx minus y and then of course we have the force due to the damper which is equal to c times x dot minus y dot and because i've drawn them in the negative x direction i've used kx minus y else you might ask why isn't it ky minus x the answer is i've drawn the arrows the vectors in the negative direction so i'm going to subtract these all right and then the equation of motion would look like m x double dot this is x of t i'm going to leave out the t dependency just for brevity times c x dot minus y dot plus k x minus y. And I've skipped a step in coming up with this equation of motion. I would normally have written f equals ma, where this is the ma term, is equal to the sum of the forces, which in this case would be negative k x minus y, negative c x dot minus y dot. Those come to the other sides as a positive. Anyway, this is equation number one. And I could write this two different ways. Um, the one way is to bring all the x variables to the left and the y variables to the right. And then, of course, we know what y and its derivatives are. I'm not going to do it that way. My preference is actually to do this problem in relative coordinates. But again, either way is fine. But this is my, my personal preference. So what I do is I'll say let 
will change coordinate z equal x minus y. In other words, z is the relative displacement of the mass with regards to the base. Now, in the past, y was always 0, so z and x would have been the same thing. But now there's a distinction. So x is the total displacement of the mass, meaning uh, the displacement of the base plus the displace displacement of the mass relative to the base, whereas z is just the displacement of the mass relative to the base. And then, of course, we'll call that number 2, but we can take the derivative that z dot is equal to x dot minus y dot. We'll call this equation 3, and then what we'd like to do is substitute equations 2 and 3 into 1. I'll write that out, 2 and 3 into equation 1. And I could rewrite that then as mz double dot plus cz dot plus kz is equal to minus my double dot. Right, and the reason for this my double dot on the left is because on the right I only had an mx. So by replacing my mx with or mx double dot with mz double dot, I've actually got to subtract my double dot from the right. Take a look at that for a few minutes and convince yourself it's correct. Um, but since we know what y double dot is, we can say this is equal to, and of course y double dot is just the second derivative of this, which is just minus omega squared times y, which is y sub zero e to the i omega t. So what is all of that? The minus sign becomes a plus omega squared m y sub zero e to the i omega t. And I'm just going to choose to write this in a more familiar term where we're going to call this magnitude just f sub zero e to the i omega t and let's give this some number some numbers uh, this will be number four this will be number five and we'll say where f sub zero equals omega squared m y sub zero we'll call that equation six Okay, so again, what I did is I took our free body diagram, I wrote the equation of motion in number one, I then did a change of variable, a change of coordinates by saying let's look at the relative coordinates, something we'll call z, and we defined that as x minus y, substituted that back into our equation of motion, and we ended up with equation four. I recognize that equation four, we know what the y double dot is because it was prescribed initially, so taking the second derivative, plugging it in, I got that, and then I chose to call this amplitude f sub zero. And so why did I do all of that? Because equation five is now something that we're very, very familiar with. This is just the equation of motion for a mass spring damper system with a harmonic load. And we've seen that time and time again. So let me just draw it here. Um, so this is the mass. There's some base at the bottom. We've got our spring. Oh, it's not a very good spring. We've got our damper. Damping constant C, spring stiffness K. And now we've got some force here that is just F sub zero e to the i omega t. So in other words, we can replace the base motion with an equivalent system, this one here, which is one that we're familiar with. The only difference is that this f sub zero is actually equal to omega squared my sub zero, which is just a constant. But other than that, this should be real familiar territory now, and we've seen this in a previous video how to treat this. Uh, there's a link to that up above. Uh, I'm going to continue on the next page, but I'm going to skip some steps seeing this is repetition. And what I've done here is I've gone ahead and drawn the same drawing we saw on the previous page. So we've taken our system with base motion, converted it into a system we're much more familiar with, and the only difference now is that this coordinate is z. 
but this is the response to a mass spring damper system to a harmonic load. And I'll remind you that what we did in the previous videos, we said that the response oops, is of the form uh, Z sub P, so the steady state or particular solution, Z sub P of T, is equal to capital Z sub zero, some amplitude, times e to the i omega t. We'll call that equation 7. And what we did is we substituted equation 7 into equation 5. And I'm not going to do it again because we've seen this, but uh, the result that we got was that z sub p, the steady state response, is equal to F sub zero divided by K minus M omega squared quantity squared plus C omega quantity squared square root of that, so to the power of one half times E to the I omega T minus phi. And specifically, this part here is the amplitude, and that's what is z0. Z, z so, z0, or z sub 0, is equal to, let me just write it out, f0. Well, I'm going to substitute for f0, because we know from equation, what was it, equation 6, let me write it here, equation 6. We know what F0 is. We defined that. So that's just equal to Y sub 0, M omega squared, divided by this whole denominator. So K minus M omega squared, quantity squared, plus C omega quantity squared, all to the 1 half. Okay, this can be rewritten as, since I mentioned in previous videos, uh, mechanical engineers like to write things in non-dimensional form. This can be rewritten as R squared. Oh, let me take a step back. I've skipped a step. Um, I want to take Y sub zero to the other side. We talked in a previous video about um, amplification factor or magnitude factor or... Uh, Amplitude ratio is another word for it. But the idea is, is that we would like to see we've got some base motion y with an amplitude y sub zero. What is the relationship between the amplitude of the base motion and the amplitude of the motion of the mass? So we'll rewrite this as z sub zero divided by y sub zero. And that is equal to m omega squared divided by k minus m omega squared quantity squared plus c omega quantity squared all to the one half. And then this can be rewritten in non-dimensional terms as r squared divided by square root of 1 minus r squared plus 2 zeta r quantity squared. Okay, and in case you've forgotten, we'll do this in red just to keep it separate, uh, r is equal to the reduced frequency or the ratio of the frequency to the natural frequency, so this is just omega over omega n. We know that omega n is equal to k over m. We know that zeta is equal to the damping ratio to c divided by c critical, and we know that c critical is equal to 2 times the square root of mk. And I guess over here I should write, we haven't put in what phi is, this again came from the previous video, but that phi 
is equal to the octangent of the imaginary part divided by the real part. So that was C omega divided by K minus um, uh, M omega squared. And that could be rewritten in non-dimensional terms again as 2 zeta R divided by 1 minus R squared where the zetas and r's I've given down here, what those are. Okay, I will leave this as an exercise for you, how to convert this into this in non-dimensional terms. Um, I'm happy to post it if you're having some struggles with it. I'll post it in the comments below. You guys can leave me a comment and let me know if, if that's required. But uh, other than that, that's all I wanted to say in this video. Please go ahead and give it a thumbs up if you found something useful. Uh, I'd love to hear what questions you might have in the comments section below. Thank you very much for watching, and I'll catch up with you in the next video.